Any group that is ready? You didn't talk to anyone? Okay, you are ready? Good. So, <clears throat> can you all please settle down? Yeah, just the overall general okay. response. Remember, I put these questions. What did you learn? Do I need to read the question and then the answer? No. Just the, just the answers. Just the answers. Yeah. What? Okay. Yeah. Just to give an idea. Huh? Now I will read the, the, yeah. the, the, ask the, the question really fast. Sure. Okay. 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 Here. Can I have your attention, please? Can I begin? Yeah. Well, good, mor good, mor good morning, everyone. I, uh, I'm part of the group of Hope for Food. And we asked uh, ask two questions for our, co for our possible customers. The first one was that it was, it was to you to imagine that you are a food distributor and 50% or half of your incomes are lost because of logistics problems like pr uh, transportation and storage problems. And uh, we asked the people if they were willing to buy uh, technology that avoid the avoid to avoid the risk of you losing 50% of what you buy from farmers and all the answers were yes for this question and the last one was how much of your financial loss are you willing to pay and the answers uh, uh, are distributed in a range of 20% of to 50% that was it thank you Hi, it's me again. Um, uh, our idea is produce a, prod a product to bond regeneration. And the cost of the commercial product is about $300. So our idea is produce the same product, but with a low cost, basically. So our question is about how much do you pay for this product, a national product? That's the first one. The second one, it's about uh, what you were about the, uh, about this project. So if you recommend this project for other professionals or for other clients, and if you inform your clients about the price of this project, so if you can provide some discount for your clients and basically the question was the um, customers uh, will pay about uh, $100 for the same product so the commercial products around $300 and the persons pay $100 for this and everybody recommend this product for others clients so for other professionals the same area for health and it's that is the most important questions about our product. So everybody wanted to buy it? Everybody wants to buy. For How many people did you talk to? Uh, five people. Oh, okay. That's very good. All right. Thank you. Any other group? Would you want to tell that later on or are you ready? Not ready? So maybe after lunch, I would want to really hear from the rest of the groups. Is that OK? That's your promise. OK. So in that case, I would like to hand over the microphone to Rodrigo to introduce the next speaker. Hi. Uh I would like to invite Leticia to give us our talk. Uh, she also can share us 
uh, her experience in biotechs, and then uh, she has a nice history because she come from the academic after goes to the company, and so he be back in the in their self, his herself company. And for us, it's a pleasure that you can share with us your knowledge, and uh, I hope every, everybody can uh, profit this week to to take some talks with her. And uh, about Avuv, uh, you can use her experience in your groups. It's very important to talk with her during the week to solve problems concerning IP in your projects, groups. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks. First of all, I'd like to thank Rodrigo for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, after, I would like to thank you. Prof Professor Hagu, Professor Richard, Fiona, and all the people that are here that we know that they came from far, far away to teach us something. And it's a, it's a great pleasure, and I hope I can give you some uh, tips on IP, but I'm glad to be here because I'm learning a lot of about entrepreneurship. So um, the first lesson that I have learned yesterday was about the my profile. I have never uh, present myself in a, in a way that I can give you the knowledge, the skills, the ability, like they teach us yesterday. Then I believe that's a great way to start uh, to sell your company and to show what you have done so you can organize your ideas. So let me introduce myself. I have an MBA in business management from FGV. I, am, uh, I have a PhD in biochemistry from UCAMP and I have ex extensive experience in trademarks and patents. And I have structured intellectual property departments from two pharmaceutical companies. Also, I am an uh, entrepreneur, inventor of several patents, a member of pharmaceutical committees and associations. I have more than nine years of experience in pharmaceutical marketing with operations in Brazil and abroad. And I was invited as a researcher at the Pasteur Institute in Paris and in the Institute of Organic Chemistry at UNICAMP. I'm also consultant in intellectual property of genetics department at UNICAMP and Brazilian Association of Genetic medicines industries and uh, something that I would like you to understand and that's a uh, um, great gift that life gives you if you love what you do uh, the world recognize it because I have several awards that it's great to 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 receive and I believe each of you have this ability to get to have this kind of award if you love what you do so that's why I'm here I'm founder of a consultant firm i9pi and uh, the main goal of this firm is to contribute with innovation in the area of IP and I have several partners in universities associations and offices so uh, why I'm here and the, the, the main uh, purpose that I'm here is to help you to understand a little bit about IP I not uh, uh, intend that you know everything but I, I believe if uh, you understand the importance of IP and where you can find information, it will be great. It will be uh, very good for me and for you. So, uh, w what we are going to talk about today. Today I'm going to, to give you five topics. It's only an overview. I talk about intellectual property system, innovations, pattern information technology, patent due diligence and freedom to operate, IP strategies, and a little bit about contracts. Uh, I know that it's a lawyer here that she can help us because I'm technical, but uh, I will give you briefly the overview of what you can find and who you can talk to to find the legal contract that suits to you. So uh, to uh, introduce the, the team, I, I believe that it's good to show that we have a world intellectual property organization that's called WIPO. And it's where you can find a lot of things, a lot of trainings, a lot of uh, uh, information that can be helpful for you. So I will show you a video to introduce what is WIPO and where you can find this information when you need something. Innovation, the uniquely human force that drives mankind's progress. Without innovation, your phone wouldn't be smart, there'd be Can no GPS, it? no music on...
on the go and no HDV mankind's progress. Mankind's innovation, the uniquely human force that drives mankind's progress. Without innovation, your phone wouldn't be smart, there'd be no GPS, no music on the go, and no HD video. Stories without special effects, no colour, no sound. And unable to look inside the human body, doctors would be in the dark. The intellectual property system exists to encourage the innovators and creators who make the world a better place. The World Intellectual Property Organization, a specialised agency of the United Nations, helps them do this every day across the globe. WIPO provides a forum where governments debate and shape intellectual property laws, such as copyright laws, to adapt them to the changing needs of our global digital society. WIPO's goal is to make intellectual property work for everyone WIPO operates international filing systems that make it easier to protect and promote inventions, brands and designs across borders. Everyone, from individual inventors and small businesses to the world's biggest companies, can file a single application through WIPO's PCT, Madrid and Hague systems to apply for protection in countries across the world. This saves them time and money. In the last 50 years, WIPO has processed over 4.5 million international patent, trademark and design applications for everything, from machine tools to medicines to solar panels. And when disagreements arise over IP, WIPO provides arbitration and mediation as an alternative to costly court proceedings. WIPO gives people the tools to use IP effectively helping people in developing countries to make a living from their ingenuity and creativity. That means more opportunity and more jobs. Innovation requires information. WIPO provides free access to IP information, including more than 55 million patent documents and more than 25 million records of trademarks and designs. And WIPO trains tens of thousands of people every year how to access, learn from and use all this priceless information. Since its inception over a hundred years ago, the global IP system overseen by WIPO has helped create an environment where innovation and creativity can flourish. That means more minds creating new technologies to conquer the world's problems, more music and more ways to listen to it, more art and culture, and more knowledge reaching us in ever-increasing ways. Every day, creative people all over the world are finding new ways to improve our future. WIPO and the intellectual property system help make that happen. And uh, now I would like to know if you understand what is the IP system. Anyone would like to, to, to talk, what do you understand by IP? There is anyone here that would like to to give your opinion? Yes, uh, I'm Prof Professor Hagu is a WIPO consultant, and uh, he can help you if you'd like something from direct from WIPO. And there is a lot of trainings, a lot of uh, databases, and it's a great way to start if you'd like to to understand more about IP. So, what is IP? What is this intellectual property system? Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's regarding to significant amount of technological and, and cultural products from human intellect that can be protected by this system. And under this system, any original idea conceived for industries can be transformed into goods and services traded on the market with high economic value for both companies and nations. So you have to understand that it's not only something to give you a commercial advance, it's also good for society. As WIPO said, uh, it's to a better world. If you have innovation, you have a better world. So uh, I would like you to understand why we are talking about this IP system here. It's because as you are going to have some ideas, documentations, founding, experimentation, you also have to have the market access. And uh, to, to, to get to the market, 
sometimes it's good if you have this kind of protection. You have to have a protection. It doesn't uh, 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 matter if it's a patent, a copyright, or a trade secret that I, I will show, or you maybe uh, uh, would like to, to be an open source. It, you have to, to understand what you can do and what makes sense for you, for your company. So that's why I give you an overview of what is possible. Because it's not only to patents, do you have trademarks like I here heard about all the trademarks that you you the name of your company and for instance Bonita it's a great name I believe it's it's a very very uh, interesting way to think it's bone and uh, like uh, Ita it's stone but in Brazil it's a, it's a good way to to have a company it's uh, people will like it but you have to worry about another countries. What does it mean? And is it a, a, a great name worldwide if you would like to go? So it, you have to, to understand about trademarks and to create something very, very good. And I, I will give some tips about trademarks. And as you see, knowledge is power. So uh, the IP, what is IP? IP is something that you have from the intellectual activity. Uh, so it's literary artists, industrial and science fields as we are here. And it's uh, maybe industrial design, trademarks, service marks, commercial names, trade secrets, confidential information. It's very, very important to you to understand the confidential information because sometimes you talk something with someone that cannot be good for your company. So you have to understand how to keep the information confidential when you would like to have some advantages. And you have to understand the role of intellectual properties in the process of innovation to be a, a, a great com a competitor in the market. So to create and maintain a comp competitive advantage, you must protect the core idea upon which a startup is founded. And only to understand, one product may have a lot of intellectual property uh, uh, protection, like the copyright in the package design, the patent, patent number, the trademark register. So it's only one product with three kinds of protections. And uh, as, as long as it makes sense for you, you, you can have all this one. So to understand the difference, there are trade secrets that uh, it's a protection of a formula, method of uh, information, something that you can keep it confidential. Um, the most famous example is Coca-Cola formula. But you can have a new process and something that may be uh, the difference to, to your product and then it's not uh, 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 available. To, uh, you cannot patent this, but you can keep it in secret. And the length of the protection is as long as information remains confidential. So you have to have this contract, this confidential agreement to make sure that you are going to have your trade secret prote protection. The patent is, is more easy to, to understand. It's machines, compositions, device, process, everything you, you, you have. There are some requirements that, that I, I will explain for you. But there are many, many examples, like iPhone. iPhone has several patents. And drugs, every drug you, you innovate, the drug has several patents for the, the molecule. OK. From a slide? U.S. patent number. It's not a price. It's the number of the patent in the USA. The <laughs> it's, it's the, I, can, I can show you after if you'd like. The number in Brazil is different from USA. Um, and it's, it's the, the number of the patent. Uh, in the patent, the patent, the length of protection is 20 years from the date of the filling. And the copyright, copyright, it's for books, photos, music, recordings, video, um, architecture, computer programs. So there is a lot of examples like the Da Vinci Code, there is a book, a move, uh, the Michael Jackson's great hits, the music recording videos, and so. And it's, uh, the length of protection is the life of the author plus seven years for the works created by a single author. And the trademarks. Uh, 
the trademarks, yes. Each 10 years you can uh, renew this, this, this protection. But for the, the, the trade secrets, there is no, uh, as long as you keep it secret, it's forever, like Coca-Cola. And I'm sorry. And uh, the patent, no. The patent, in Brazil, we have a, a, a law that uh, our, our Brazilian patent office is, delays a lot of to grant a patent. So we have a lot that uh, uh, our patent here, uh, the length of protection is at, at least 10 years after granted. Sometimes it, it's more than 20 years. In the United States, there are some kind of extensions. But in Brazil, no. The only extension is that to compensate the inventor for the delay of the Brazilian patent office. And uh, about copyright, copyright there are some, some uh, extensions in the United States, but not in Brazil. Uh, what is a patent? I'm sorry. In, in Brazil, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, this law is changing. But it's seven years after the, 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 the death of the, the author. But in the United States, it's in two, uh, more than 100 years. I can check it for you the, the exactly period. They can have some kind of extensions. Can I ask this stuff, uh, for a second? Uh, you mentioned about iPhone, right? Yes. Uh, so guess how many patents does iPhone have? Ten? Hundred? Nearly two thousand patents. iPhone is covered by two thousand patents. Including the design patents, all the technologies, different technologies. So, so a product can have many, many uh, patents inside uh, that can be protected by and, and for drugs, it's, it's like iPhone. It's a lot of patents protects a, a drug. I don't know if you have heard about uh, Sophos Bouvier. It's um, a drug for hepatitis. That it's a huge discussion in Brazil because it's very expensive. And there are more than 30 patents. And one of this, that patent was granted the, um, last month. So they are discussing if it will be enforced or if it will be valid or not, because there are a lot of other patents that protect one product. So well, what is a patent? A patent is a right to exclude others from making, using, offer for sale, selling, or importing the patent invention. This right is limited in terms of territory and duration. It's 20, in almost countries, 20 years from the date of the filling. And the scope of this right is defined by the patent claims. What is the patent claims? The patent has a, a, a description, drawings, to teach, to address a person skill in the art, to disclose the best mode. But they, they have the most important part is that this is the claim. It's defined the scope of the invention. So you have to read the patent claims to understand if you are free to, to commercialize your product. It's the, the of the patent is the claims. The claims as it granted. Sometimes it's filled like a, uh, a broad uh, uh, protection, but after the examination, it's, it's specific for one product, then you can design around and launch your product. So the patents are a kind of agreement. An inventor is given a limited period of time of ex exclusivity in exchange for agreeing to make the invention public. You have to teach the society the best mode, what is the invention, because it's the main uh, uh, focus of the patent to improve the innovation. And uh, it enable and encourage the continuation of science to discovery. In other words, it's like you have patent IP, RD knowledge, innovations, and welfare. So this is uh, uh, how it must be. Sometimes it's not as good as it must be, but uh, the, the main purpose of a patent is to uh, um, give to society some innovation after the period of exclusivity. So what is 
palatable. Uh, there are a famous phrase that they say that anything under the sun that is made by man is not so easy, but I believe it's, it's uh, a way to, to think if you have uh, some innovation. Uh, and it's a real innovation. Yes, you can patent this. And there are a few, are a few limitations. And uh, like an algorithm, a theory, a scientific principle, a human being. And in each country, there are some restrictions. Ah, I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't try to find, but I believe no, <laughs> because it's uh, the, the example that everybody gives. Do you know how go if the wheel is, is the wheel, the wheel it, is it? Yes, it's it's nowadays in public domain. I can assure you, it's, it's it's it must be expired. But I don't know if someday somebody did it file a patent regarding will, but I, I will look. Maybe yes, because there are a lot of uh, uh, things that, uh, like uh, the, the uh, cars and uh, everything. I, I think there, there must be, I, I will try to find you the first patent regarding wheels. Uh, I, uh, it's a good question, it's not stupid. It's, uh, okay, it must be non-obvious to the person skilled in the art, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's how Hagu is, is uh, explaining. What are the requirements? It must be new or novel, N not a red no, not obvious, like Hagu is saying. The, what, what means not obvious? A person uh, skilled in the art cannot uh, reach that solution. It has to be useful, written description that it must have the details of the invention, it must be enabled, must describe how to make and use the invention. And the mass mode, the preferred way to practice the invention, know to the inventors as of the filing date. So the novelty. The novelty is uh, easier to understand. Invention disclosure uh, must be uh, uh, the first uh, uh, information that you give is in the, the, the patent documents. But sometimes I, I know that in the academy, we are pressured to public. So if you have to do a publication, try to file first. If you don't uh, 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 file, there is some countries which operate with 12 months of grace period. So you can public, uh, public uh, do a publication and after file your, your application. But other countries that are only six months and the majority of the countries are still absolute novelty. So if you disclose your invention, you are prior art against yourself. So if I can give you a, a first advice, please disclose your, your invention uh, before filling a patent application can limit your ability to obtain a patent. So try to first, if you'd like to patent, patent, file the patent application, then after that you can publish if you'd like to. Don't publish thinking you could stop somebody to get the patent files first. <laughs> Because uh, maybe you, are, you go to a congress, you talk about your invention, and now oh, somebody file a patent, uh, and this is my idea. Okay, you can uh, fight against, but litigations are expensive, and it's unpredictable. Uh, in Brazil, it's first to file, not first to invent. In the uh, United States, nowadays, it's first to file, and it's difficult to prove that you, you were first, you invented first. So the best practice is, file before disclose, because uh, like this timeline, you have an invention and if you file here, all of this time is prior art. So try to file here, the patent application. And if you are keeping your invention secret, you should still consider filing as quick as possible because fast moving fields, competitive research groups may uh, uh, file before you and if someone published your inventor before you, it's prior right against your application. And uh, worst, if somebody uh, files before you, it gets the patent and maybe stop you from you do what you would like to do. And it could be a very costly mistake. So why you, you, you should patent? What, what are the good reasons for patents? 
Patents prevent others from commercially util utilizing the invention. For the research-based industry, the periods of market exclusivity may be important. <laughs> Patents encourage financial risk and long-term research, guarantee the dissemination of the information, can be valued assets of the company. Uh, patent portfolios are often understood to provide office benefits as a way to uh, have a competitor advantage and have extensive defense benefits. A defensive patent portfolio can serve as an important bargain chip in the event of a startup is threatening with patent infringement by a competitor. This can be either lead a number of relative favorite outcome for a startup, including better settlement terms or an opportunity to cross license. So if you file, you have better agreements, better uh, chance to, to invest or license your technology. So that's uh, the good reasons for patents. And uh, there are a lot of categories of patent claims, only to, to give some examples. There are products that, that has the broadest protection, covers all the use, the products, even those not explicitly disclosed. The methods that the protection for a method of manufacture also covers the products obtained by that method. The use that is relatively narrow scope, but it's, it's a good, like second use magical, second ma magical use that sometimes it blocks the competitor. And one thing that you should remember, and I, I believe uh, uh, it, it, it's one uh, of my purpose here, is to you understand that patents are territorially limited. Oh, that means that if you had a patent in the United States, it's only valid there. It doesn't matter if you are here in Brazil. You have to file this patent here to have this protection here. So uh, you have to understand if you uh, have something that uh, uh, really deserves an international application because uh, it will be, uh, uh, the costs will be higher, but maybe it will be paid by the profits. So you have to evaluate if your, your innovation is, uh, um, uh, co uh, compensates the, the, the costs. So in order to protect your invention, in multiple countries you have several options. One is direct to file. You can go to the uh, trademarks and, and patents office of each country and file your patent application at the same time. Another is the Paris Convention that you can file a separate patent application and after 12 months you can choose another uh, uh, country in file this patent application. And the most common if you have to to protect it simultaneously in a large number of countries is to do a PCT like as WIPO video shows. Uh, it's in the same time you can uh, reach a lot of countries. So uh, there are th these three kind of international multiple protection you can choose if you think it's good for you, if, you, if it makes sense for your product. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about the Brazilian patent law. The Brazilian patent law is from 1996, the, the law that is, we have nowadays, it, that the patent term is expired in 20 years, <laughs> counting from the filling date. And uh, this term will not be less than 10 years for patents of invention. This is then our Article 40 of our law. Because uh, this article was introduced to compensate for the long time needed to dissemination. In Brazil, it took about six to eight years at uh, the Brazilian Patent Office, uh, while in the United States, it's about one, two years. So it took so long for, for pharmaceutical, it's more than 10 years. And to, to compensate this delay, they give you the 10 years, at least 10 years, you, your patent will be in force. And uh, this slide I put it to, uh, this morning because I was talking with Agul and he asked me, are you going to talk about the difference between uh, the patentable ma materials in different countries? And I didn't uh, uh, realize that some, somebody would be interested in, in something that is not patentable in Brazil. Uh, isolated material, isolated microorganisms, human cell, animal cell, nothing uh, that is not checked here is patentable in Brazil. But if you'd like to go to Australia, uh, European Union, United States, Japan, maybe you can 
get your patent granted. So I believe it's interesting to understand what do you want to to file, or what what is your main purpose, and which countries we will choose, because our uh, each country has its own uh, uh, regulation regarding the patent patentable materials. And now I, I'm going to talk about another topic that's patent due diligence. Why worry about due diligence? Why do you have to check the documentation? Because if you have, uh, if you infringe the patent of, of another person, you can be in a litigation and it must cost a lot of, like monster cases can cost 10 million or more dollars if you infringe a patent you, in, in, of somebody. So lawsuits are cash and time waste that may be the failure of your company. And um, what is the patent due diligence? W how do you do this? You have to f do a freedom to operate. This is a, a, a as you have to, to uh, uh, analyze the ability to proceed with research, develop, and commercialization without infringing any intellectual properties of others. So another uh, uh, message that I would give it to you and I would like you to understand that a company, a startup, or any individual must do the freedom to operate analysis well before launch to avoid the risk of litigation. But you, you, it's sometimes it's scary because you can find something that will stop you. But remember, pattern protection is territorial. So you find a pattern in the United States similar to what you would like to do, but it's not in Brazil, no problem. You can do this in Brazil. A patent have limited duration. Is it valid? Do you have, uh, uh, it, or, or was it granted? Sometimes it's only a patent application, not a patent granted. So you have, uh, uh, you, it's in public domain, you can explore this. And have limited of scope, as I said. Sometimes uh, uh, what you, you would like to, to, to do is, not in that patent, it's, it's not in the claim of the patent. It seems to be, but when you go to the claim, you see that it's limited. You can design around and do your innovation. When, when you have a, a patent uh, in Brazil, file in Brazil, and somebody is doing your, your invention, you, you detect that, you go to the Brazilian patent office and, and say, I would like you to examine this uh, prior because I have been infringing. If there is a way to fast track your examination if you have somebody infringing your patent. So uh, that, that's standing. Yes, yes, your application. You, you ask uh, ENPA, please go faster because I'm, I have this, this person trying to use my invention. And also, these 10 years, will, uh, uh, if the person infringes your patent, and after 10 years the, uh, you have your grant patent, you can ask them, oh, uh, with litigation obvious, but you can ask them the, the royalties for your invention. You, you can fight for that because it's, it, it, uh, I don't know how to say in English, but in Portuguese, you have expectativa de direito. And that uh, must be the law expectation, something like that. So to conduct the, the due diligence, you can uh, find someone to help you to do the search or hire a specialist, or you can search online. If you go to WIPO, there are a lot of uh, tips to, to search online. And uh, you can search in the uh, USPTO, that is the United States Patent Office, APO, that is the European one, ENPA is our Brazilian Patent Office, the WIPO, the patent scope, and even the Google Patents, if you do a search, it's easy going, it's, it's, it's very easy to, to find what you need. But there are a lot of uh, uh, databases. It, 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 there are only an example of the, the free ones, but there are a lot of 
uh, uh, things that you can do. So, uh, an overview of how you can do this. First of all, you have to, to define what will be uh, the, the information that you, you like to evaluate on the patentability and the freedom to operate. Choose the database that covers the information you want. Define your search criteria, the days, the rate, and the keywords. Collect this data, remove irrelevant and insufficient information, <laughs> and then analyze, conduct a statistical analysis on the structural information. You have to, to see the bibliographic data, inventors, owners, titles, and search for relevant words, terms, <laughs> and export the data, and analyze the purpose, which technology, which applications, define your own classification, and do this kind of analysis to recheck if you are uh, uh, able to, to, to go to the market. The results of the statistical analysis can be structured in a map using several types of graphs, bar, lines, bubbles, or in a report. You can do a freedom to operate report. And uh, you have uh, the technical and commercial valuation to analyze if you, it's worth to do your own de deposit in selected countries if you'd like, if you see that nobody has done yet what you would like to do, and then you have to write and file the patent application. So this is uh, an overview of you can do, but also there are a lot of strategies to search and to find it. And when a relevant patent is found, it's like I said, look at the claims, not just the disclosure of the patents. Many patents can be designed around. Maybe the patent is similar to your invention, but you can do something better or something different that uh, uh, allows you to, to launch the product. Has the patent expired? Sometimes the time or the maintenance fee uh, was not paid and the patent is not valid. So also you can do your invention. And uh, now I would like to talk about the IP strategy. Protect IP can be essential to obtain venture capital, founding, preventing competitors, etc. So uh, some strategies that I, I found on, on a publication at Forbes that I believe it's, it's good if you would like to, to read uh, deeply, but only to, uh, to you understand what is the, the uh, good strategy is keep your employment work separate from your new idea. You have to confidentially and eventually ass assign them agreements. Always, when you have someone working with you, it's great to have this agreement. And don't let the people claim over ownership of your IP or company, so you have to have a statement of ownership. Evaluate your core asset and decide what type of protection do you need. Do you need a trade secret? Can the invention be kept secret? Does it make business sense, policy sense, and ethical sense to, be, to keep it secret? If yes, okay, you have a trade secret. Or no, uh, I would like to have a patent. So is it novel? Has inventive step and utility? Yes, it has, okay, so, oh, so you can have the patents. And what I believe that most of you can have here is the trademark, because trademark is a, a very, very good way to start and to show that you are a creative. So make sure you have a great name. Your brand can be immensely valuable in the marketplace. Startups should make sure their name and logos are clear for commercial use. Here are some steps to avoid naming issues. So. Do a Google search and search at the Brazilian trademark or USPTO or whatever you would like to go to, do, to see if somebody has the same trademark as you would like to have. Make sure the name is distinctive and memorable. You might want to have an IP consultant to do this if you'd like to a professional search. Don't make the name so limited that you have to change it later on as the business changes or expands. So it's good to think long term. If, what, what does your company do now and what may it do in the future? So think about a, a trademark that may be useful for long term. Think about international implications of the name. You don't want to have a name that turns out to be embarrassing or negative in another language. So it's good to understand what does it mean in, in other languages. 
avoid unusual spelling of the name. This is like to cause problems or conf confusion down the road. So, uh, like Google or Yahoo are examples of uh, trademarks that were su 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 successful, but it's not easy to to write or to to spell. And it's exceptions. You, it's better if you try something uh, easier. And the last one is come up with five na names you like and test the market with your employees, partners, investors, customer. Ask them what they think about the name, if it's good, what what they, they think it could be better. So it's it's a good way to to understand if you have a good brand. And at least, uh, uh, final, I would like to talk about legal contracts, and I, I will ask the lawyers' uh, help because it's only an overview of what is uh, uh, public in, in most of sites and what I have in my experience, but there are a lot of things that you can uh, find regarding legal contracts. And the first uh, uh, the first uh, information that I, I, I would like to you to, to is to find a good legal consultant and a good accountant because you have to understand the, the taxes, bills, the legal li li liabilities, and it's important to a company to have everything okay to don't have problem in the future. And you have to consider an IP assignment agreement. There are two types of IP assignment agreements. Technology as, as, as sign agreements that you have some uh, uh, creation from yourself that you give to the company, or the company has the invention assignment agreements that assign the company ownership of relevant work. So it's important to define these agreements. It's important to have internal rules like IP policy and, and leadership and rights and powers to understand the rules and regulation of your own company. And the most important thing for you now, I believe it's the non-disclosure agreement. It's easy to find uh, several examples in the internet. I will show you some of these examples, but I, I strongly recommend a lawyer to help you with this because it's imperative before any business conversation to assure that you have your uh, uh, protection and should specify what constitutes confidential information, how confidential information should be handled, who owns the information, the time that the information will be disclosed, the time period confidential will be maintained. So it's very important to have this in the A. And it's important if you have employee to have a contract and offer letters to understand the policies to be okay with the, the law. So it's a basic template that you can find a lot of things different and I, I strongly recommend you to, to get a lawyer to help you with this. This is uh, um, a simple template that shows that the agreement is between you and somebody where is, 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 is related to what invention, what's the confidential information you should keep in secret, what, what are the restrictions, what are the IP uh, that uh, is is regarding what, what kind of IP, and the damage and, and performance, the payment, the choice of the law, the date. So there are a lot of things that you should consider and a lawyer can help you with that. So in, in, there are key events in the life, science, life cycle of a startup that you must consider uh, for each one the um, appropriated uh, um, documents that you should consider. When the company is found, the name of the company, the know-how, the patent core ideas, the clearance of the trademark, the product name, service name, uh, the agreements that include IP ownership, confidentiality provision. Then you have the second step that is hire first employee. You have to have this employee agreement, confidentiality clause, etc. Then you have the product development and release. You have to ensure IP ownership, confidentiality, in use of uh, contracts with third party contractors. So you go to the market, you, you have to proper use your trademark and talk to uh, potential strategic parts. You have to have this NDA, this non disclosure agreement. So as the company matures, a more formal IP strategy may be developed. And 
Uh, what I would like you to understand that we are nothing alone. We have to have strategic partnership along all the way, along all the, the business, because uh, we ha you have to be a, uh, to have someone who understand and to, to do you the information about the bills, the, the taxes. It's a good account. You have to have uh, some uh, partnership with investors with lawyers, with IP consultants, and so it's uh, the main uh, um, the main uh, information that I would like you to understand is we have to have a lot of thing, uh, people with us who, uh, that has uh, different skills to help us. So to improve the probability of the su success, you have to optimize contractual terms with the help of the lawyer. Positional participants and stakeholders to, to deliver their skills and experience. So you have to understand each of members of your group, what are their, their skills, what are their experience, what they, they can help you. You have to implement an appropriate ID and business plan. And uh, the number four is very good for life. It's not for only your company. You have to over communication. You have to see if uh, the other part understand what you're saying. I believe the communication is the, the, the basis of everything. Uh, select the right seeds in the right time. It remains a major intellectual challenge, so you have to have some leadership and core competence to understand what is good, what, we, it's, what is worth to invest your time, your money. And always, always find opportunities where people see trouble. If you see something that is difficult, uh, think as opportunity, not a trouble. You, you will be succeed if you find opportunities. And consider the prov provisional application. If you cannot to do the application now, you can do the provisional application in the United States. It's not available in Brazil, but it, it uh, uh, assures that you are the first to file, and it, it's your invention. And as I said, early stage collaboration, it's, it's very, very important for your success. So that's all, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Any questions? No? Um, I was wondering if the patent has any cost. If so, would the cost uh, be um, uh, the profit of, of the patent will be uh, compensate the cost that I have uh, doing the pattern? Even though, I, let's say that I, I want to get a patent of a product that I designed and I have a very good marketing uh, strategy, but uh, later, nobody's going to use my, my product and the cost of the patent is very high and there will not be profit, so... It's a great question because sometimes you don't know if your product will be available if you are going to reach the, the final step, so does it uh, uh, useful to patent or not? If you, if you have some some, if, if I can give you some, some tips, if you have inside of you, oh, it's a good product, it will be okay, do the file application, then you can withdraw, you can uh, stop to pay that. But I believe a provision application is not ex so expensive in the United States, and you are sure that you are the guy that invents the, the, that thing. So, in my opinion, if you think you, it's novel, it has inventive step, all the requirements, it's a good patent, it's a good invention, do the patent application. Then after that, you can uh, uh, withdraw. I, I understand, sometimes it's not a problem. So you can withdraw. I, in the pharmaceutical industry, I have several patents that I have to withdraw. We file the patent application, we see the costs. The product is not as so good as we think it could be, so it, it's, it's some money that you spend, but sometimes it's better than you do not file and lost a good invention. The cost of the patent depend on the product, uh, the content? Ah, the contract, the contract, okay. 
and also depend on the country where you, I don't know, sign the contract. Uh, what about Brazil? What would be the cost, for example, of something typical? In Brazil, uh, the, the file application is about 100 reais, about that. But uh, if you write the patent, it's, uh, it's only the, the text from uh, patent office. And the uh, United States is around, uh, do you remember the, the taxes for file application in the United States? I believe it's like uh, $1,000, like that. Brazil, uh, uh, $1,600 tralala reais. Mas vale, se você achar que é uma boa invenção. It's worth if you believe it's, it's, it's a good invention. But Brazil will delay. We'll, you have this 10 years from now. If Nobody infringes your patent. How much does it cost to get a patent agent or attorney to write a patent? Depends on the patent. Uh, if you would like to somebody write your patent for you, do the search for you, depends. Uh, there are a lot of lawyers, a lot of uh, offices that can f do it for you. But in universities, sometimes they have the needs that they do it for free. It's something that you can try to find if you have this, this help. Because uh, it, uh, th there are offices that uh, it's 10,000 reais or more. So the needs can do it for you. Uh, and I, I believe it's a good. What happens if someone uh, use your research um, to in, in, in a, one patent, uh, you have some, some kind of, of no, you have nothing. You have to protect, like uh, in Brazil, we have this, this, this statement. You have to protect because if you did not, you, you allow it. You, it's your problem. So that's why I'm, I'm saying you have to try to see if it's, it's worth, it's innovative, protect it as soon as possible. Any more questions? No? No, there are a lot of databases to do the searches. And the, the free ones is Google, Google Patents is a good start one. If you go to the Google, uh, you have to have a good strategy. What are your key words? What are your, your classification? I can teach you if you'd like to, but it's another workshop and then, uh, I can give you my, my card and, and send you the presentation because it's, it's not so easy, but it's, it, you can do. You can do by yourself, or you can hire someone to do. Because you have to, to search, and uh, not only in the publications, sometimes it's uh, uh, a congress, sometimes it's, uh, you have to, to, to have a good strategy because you have to look all the information that, that's published. And uh, there is some tips that I can give to you if you'd like to. But it's not uh, as, as Difficult as it seems to, but you have to do this, this search very, very uh, uh, detailed one to have sh uh, to, to understand that you you have something new and with novelty, inventive steps, and and a good uh, invention to patent. Yes. Uh -huh. But if I find a biomass, for example, a protein in a book, I cannot in Brazil, no, but you can do it in the United States. And also, you can try to find a way to protect this invention. You find a method to, do, to, to reach this one. The test uh, sometimes uh, I, I have to understand exactly what your 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 research because 
there are a lot of things that you can try to protect. Not the, the, the protein, not the, the but the, the methods. And sometimes if you're going to do uh, a construct, uh, are you going to, to put it in, 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 a, in a vector or something like that, that has novelty, inventive step, and is useful? Maybe we can try uh, some protection. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, if I, found, I find a microorganism able to be biosynthesized and powerful drug for, against cancer, for example, and then another guy from the USA come to Brazil and also find this and bring this to his counter, he will be able to patent that and I know. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. And then I, I would like to know how we can, as a, a researcher association, ask for our government, or press our government, to try to change these kind of rules that do not give us the same powerful in, uh, in, this, in this field of invention. It's, it's a great question because uh, I came from generic industry, so generic industry is opposite from this one. This, this, uh, the generic industry would like everything in public domain to produce the, the drugs and to lower the costs. But I know that inventions need a higher protection. We, we need to change some kind of things to allow us to protect something that is ours. And it's sad to know that somebody takes it, go to the United States and the rules, uh, the, the laws are, are made by, by the Congress, the, 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 the researchers, the society, the associations try to pressure. There are an association in Brazil, uh, a BPI, that I am, I am associated, the Brazilian um, Association of IP, that is given to the, the um, um, candidates of the, the president that some kind of uh, advice, uh, please, do it more restricted. Uh, I need more protection. I need a faster examination and a lot of things that they, need, they believe that's better for innovation in Brazil. So there are some associations, the BPI, ASP, MP, there are a lot of associations that ha can help to pressure the government. So I would like to suggest to you, if you find some microorganism like that, keep it in secret go to outside your account, make your patents, so come back and publish your articles, do whatever you want. It's serious. We have to pressure our governments to try to change these kind of rules that are lion-in rules for us. When we, when we are... When we are part of an institution, uh, like a, a scientist, and you discover something, you, you have to to apply a patent, and there will be uh, many players involved: the institution, you, and maybe uh, who who is the responsible for the laboratory. And how is this uh, deal in terms of benefit? of the patent. The parts, yeah. The ownership, uh, um, is, uh, each university has this own policy. Sometimes it's 50-50, uh, uh, sometimes the, the professor has n no ownership, only the invention, uh, and it's all honored by the university. So each, each uh, institute has its own policy, so you have to see what is the, the policy at your institution. In my experience, uh, um, uh, mainly it's 50-50. Uh, companies give this this kind of uh, uh, agreement, but I know sometimes FAPESP or other uh, uh, grant uh, agents may have some part of this. I know in Brazil, CNPq, I believe, does not uh, uh, need more ownership. It, it gives you the patent, but the university sometimes asks you 
uh, 50-50 or 100 uh, because you are the professional, you are paid to be there, and it's like companies. Companies, when you, you depend on the company, but a uh, pharmaceutical company, when you sign your employer ag agreement, you agree that all your work is on by the company because they, they are paying your salary to be there and there is no ownership for you. So you have to see the policy, the IP policy, uh, where do you want to, to do this. But uh, uh, it's important to understand all the players involved and to give the, the right uh, to the people that deserve it. So that would be a contract? Yes. That's a good lawyer will help you to do this conference. It's important to have the conference to state this. Is there a very a clear definition of who the inventor is in the Brazilian uh, patent law? Yes. How do you define an inventor? For example, if there are two or three inventors for the same patent, how do you how do you assign that uh, inventorship? Uh, for example, uh, in the United States Patent Office, the inventor is one who contributes intellectually to the idea. And in the you, typical in universities, what uh, for publications of papers, uh, you include the professor's name, right? at uh, the beginning or at the end. But in the US patent law, unless the professor has contributed intellectually, or anybody who is named as the inventor, unless they have contributed intellectually to that invention, the patent can be invalidated. So it's a very serious thing to add only the names of people who have actually contributed intellectually for the invention. So is there something like that in Brazilian law? In Brazilian law, yes. If you fight, you can try to invalidate a patent uh, with this argument. But in practice, uh, what, what I have seen in my life, sometimes it's the professor or the CEO of the company that we know that he doesn't contribute for, for the invention but sometimes he's there. And if you have to fight and to, to do a litigation, maybe you can win. It's, it's possible. It's, 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 it's po I have never seen in my, my life, but it's an argument that you can use to, to validate a patent, but it's not as common as the United States because we see a lot of inventors in, we know that one or two have real contribute intellectual with this invention. I'll just give you a suggestion for you, and uh, if you are a professor, also give it to your students. It's common we just use uh, articles to research articles to our projects. Uh, I know persons that make PhD, and after four years, he founds an IP of exactly what he was doing during his PhD. So before I start a new project, do not only search in database from articles, search in database for patents. You probably will find something or like or similar what you are looking for. So stop doing that or just try doing that better. But do not do that at the end of your PhD or at the end of your master program. You have to make a search in patents at the beginning of your project. Otherwise you can waste your time. It's a suggestion. In um, most of the countries, the governments put some restrictions on what can be patented apart from scientific things. Uh, there are also, they put in what's called moral or ethical clauses for what can be patented and what cannot be. For example, nuclear weapons cannot be patented in the United States. Same thing, biological weapons cannot be uh, patented in the uh, United States. And uh, in uh, some countries, 
uh, what they believe is against the morals of social values of the society. Any devices that are against the moral values, they cannot be patented also. So is there something like that in Brazil? It's in the same in Brazil. We have this kind of thing, nuclear and weapons and something that is harmful for the society. The patent have to be beneficial for the society, not something that is harm. So we have this in, in our law. Okay, thank you everybody. Just a message for the lunch. Uh, yesterday we took our lunch in a restaurant and the guy there uh, liked us <laughs> and he said he gave us 10% of discount for everyone. I do not remember the name, I can show you or you can follow us. <laughs> so you just uh, tell them that you are in the school here and so you have 10% of discount. It's a nice food there. You can. Uh, maybe someone can try it, ask people if they will remember the name and can tell you uh, later.